Well, I originally started it as a five-year effort. Well, five years, it happened to come around 9-11, uh, and I had three shows in rep, and our theater was shut down. And I had six more oh, months on that lease. That's right, I remember that. And I thought, we're done. We're at war, roughly. We're small potatoes. I think this is natural. Goodbye. And then the young people in the company said, no, you got to fight back with our art and all that stuff. And then through that, met Ann Nelson, and then we did the play The Guys. And for me, it was a... a it was just, gee, a theater actually can do something more than just pursue our artistic mm -hmm. stuff. And for me, it was a, you know, it was, you hope for these things as you get to be an adult where if someone knocks on your head and says, well, maybe the stuff you studied as a kid might actually be true. And you might discover it later in your career rather than just carrying these impulses from your youth. And it happened, actually. I'd like to do all of those expensive Irish plays that are done on Broadway. I'd like to do Connor McPherson and Martin McDonough and those. But I can't do them because I have 140 seats and Broadway has 1,000. Hmm. So, you know, so they're not the, fools. The agents and the writers that are keeping that work from you? No, it's the playwrights. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't blame them. I mean, they, they're, you know, they, they have rent to pay as well. Sure. We had, in the early days of our company, when we were more of a showcase theater, we had almost no limits to what we could do because nothing cost very much. Um, it, it, I noticed this year the City Center Encores is doing a musical called Juno that we actually did a huge production of in 92, a, a, a Mark Blitzstein musical. I saw it. That had 16 people in it because we were on a, a, a much more modest uh, budget uh, uh, production code at the time. We could never take on a project of that size now without, you know, considerable uh, uh, financial enhancement from some source. And so I, I just miss, in a sense, I miss the days of being able to say, sure, I can, I can do a 35 character play with a, a band, you know, <laughs> no problem. Um, we, we try not to uh, limit ourselves in terms of programming, uh, but, but, you know, it's, it's an issue. There's now. a funny combination with young directors that I found out. Young directors with old actors, terrific. Uh -huh. Young directors, young well, directors yes. with young actors, really That's problematic. Interesting. And it's, when I look back on uh, my career, I think I was in my 20s, and I did a play with Stalker Channing, and she, I started going, yeah, 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 you know, do, when you come in, you do this and all that. And she looked at me and she said, sit down. <laughs> and I said, excuse me? And she said, sit down. And I said, all right, I'll sit down. <laughs> and I look at her like this, and she basically was talking to the other actors on stage slowly but surely just figuring out what am I doing here? Who are these people? Much less the young guy that's just nuts behind <laughs> the, the table. A week and a half later she was ready to listen to me and also I saw what she was actually building so we were finally working together. Now what she taught me was basically shut up which young directors that's the thing and only an older actor can really get that across I think to a young director. A young actor doesn't have the the to, or the knowledge I've, I've, to do I've had 